Chinese Defense Minister General Liang Guangye and a team of top military officials toured the U.S. Marine Corps base at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina on Wednesday. This is the first visit to the U.S. by a Chinese defense minister in nine years. Liang and his 24-member delegation arrived in a helicopter. U.S. Marines welcomed them and took them for a tour of the base, showing and explaining their military equipment. The Chinese officials stopped to examine armored vehicles, a tank, and guns. On Monday, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said the United States and China have sophisticated cyber warfare technology, but Liang denied China as the origin of cyber attacks aimed at the U.S. Panetta said the two countries must work together to avoid bungles leading to conflicts. Liang's visit comes at a delicate time as the U.S. is in the midst of a diplomatic wrangle with Chinese authorities over the blind Chinese activist Chen Guancheng. The visit also concurs with the Chinese regime's displeasure with the U.S.'s stance over the Sino-Philippine naval standoff in the South China Sea. So there you go, guys. Uh, just some footage. Didn't hear this talked about or covered at all, but after nine years, again, what the heck are the Chinese doing over at a Marine Corps base where we're showing off all of our equipment. Um, I'm not one of those people that still think in strong national defense and secrecy because I don't think that our country uh, really belongs to the people anymore. I mean, <laughs> our representatives are letting these other countries come in, like the Russians that are going to be training um, here shortly. Uh, in our country, there are borders on the south, there's caches of weapons being found. This is a, s a slow takeover, slow infiltration, and, and, and they're doing absolutely nothing. In fact, they're showing the enemy everything. You know, it's just, but that's why I said you can't even really think like that. The enemy, us, them, us versus them. You know, um, uh, what's the big saying? You're either with us or against us. United we stand, divided we fall. That's all of this crap that they feed to the sheeple. Yet uh, they're selling them and their futures down, uh, down the river. So I just a lot of um, a lot of weird things going on right now, and I just thought that video was worth paying attention to and including in this report. So my website's ggnonline.com and ddarko2012 and 2013 are my YouTube channels. Check out the links; they'll be posted in YouTube's video description. Fed clears China's first U.S. bank takeover. So remember, we just covered an article recently about uh, in Michigan, uh, China City, basically uh, being instituted. This is after uh, a couple places out west. Um, basically, little China cities are coming to fruition. So the United States opened its banking market to China, uh, China's biggest bank, ICBC, for the first time, clearing a takeover of a U.S. bank by a Chinese state-controlled company just days after a high level u.s china economic talks in beijing the federal reserve which is a private cartel of banks approved an application from industrial and commercial bank of china to buy a majority stake in the u.s subsidiary of bank of east asia so these are the biggest trader sellouts they don't really represent you they never really did but they're just kind of calling themselves federal immersing themselves in uh in government talks and discussions but it says here the transaction will make ICBC the first China state-controlled bank to acquire retail bank branches in the United States. And it won't be the last. China, this is from May 9th, China, ECB, the European Central Bank, odd bedfellows, and the Euro's resilience. So um, there was another title for this, and I'll just go right to it, which was actually uh, from June 2011. China will spend billions to prop up the stricken euro. So that's basically what they're saying here in a fancy way, which is China's propping up the euro. Well, look at this news here. China gives up on Europe, will target Africa instead. This is from 510. So there's a lot of changes going on right now. And um, it says here that China has finally given up on the euro, uh, and it's no good news. And it says here it's uh, even going to complicate things even more. Um, as China will bail out Europe now that it's no longer the case, so they're not going to bail them out. And it uh, looks like uh, Greece, I saw that in Greece, the drachma banks prepared to return uh, to the drachma, uh, basically their Greek currency. So this is after, the, you know, uh, again, in Greece they have sellouts just like they do here in the United States. They don't give a shit about their people's future. 
uh, that they're supposedly electing. Well, they're, you know, we both know that these people are handpicked by these globalist international douchebags and these private think tanks and uh, clubs and uh, closed door meetings like they're going to be having at the Bilderberg Group. And um, so, yeah, before they were doing all this, the people were bartering with uh, stolen packs of gum. Uh, they were doing all sorts of things. They had the Greek suicides, so it's a big deal going on. Also, you have a uh, uh, far right, they call it a far right, far right party, which is basically a Nazi party that uh, won, I think it was like 7 to 10, 15 seats in the Greek parliament. So this is a big deal. Uh, you even had uh, Nigel Farage basically... Um, reiterating what I had just said in that recent video, which is what, on the very Nazi Friday, which is Europe is becoming, uh, different parts of Europe are becoming <clears throat> more uh, Nazi friendly. And they're, they're becoming very open about it. Even in the United States, you have your first um, lobbyist party for the Nazis. So there's a big change that's going on. And then, of course, you had Putin, basically, just the revolving door over there. So you got, and China uh, uh, coming to uh, uh, the United States and whatnot, that is what? The old Soviet, or the new Soviet uh, system. So it just really extremes are, are taking place right now around the world. But uh, yeah, so look at this. In snub to the West, Putin will skip the G8 forum. So see, there's a good example. He's just going to say, oh, I'm out, right? So it says here, 48 hours into the third term, uh, Vladimir Putin is backed out of the high-profile meeting with the U.S. Uh, uh, basically sell out Barack Obama and other G8 leaders in a snub that raises questions about whether he is reestablishing the chilly relationship with the West that characterized his first two terms as president. So this could just be a nice big show for everybody, for the markets, for investors, and uh, the same, uh, you know, families behind these closed doors at these round tables just kind of decide, you know, uh, you don't really have to go to that meeting, Vladimir. Why don't you just go ahead and hit the beach uh, that weekend? Or is he, are they actually, is it really us versus them, right? Who knows? I mean, to this at this point, I really, I can't tell you. Um, but uh, I just try to cover this news here, and then you hopefully make up your own minds. The Russians are coming. First joint Top Gun drills to be held in the United States. So we covered uh, this about holding joint drills in the United States. Anti-terror exercise scheduled for May 2012. We'll get off uh, to a flying start with tactical landing operations and terrorist camp raids. So that could be uh, uh, mocking, uh, basically uh, raiding pe regular people's houses uh, who they deem terrorists. U.S. calls for Russian airborne troops to take and hold Denver Airport. So, yeah, definitely pretty crazy stuff right here, a scene that they're going to uh, basically have, uh, which says that... Uh, actions to be taken in the case of a sudden civil war where outside forces would be called upon to protect the government from overthrown by internal forces or armed rebellion by the military says a russian general staff so but also uh the as far as the chicago nato summit that vladimir putin will not be attending georgia will attend these uh meetings remember i said they're a big wild card georgia so the NATO Secretary General reiterated that in comparison with other countries, Georgia contributes greatly to this operation. Well, what operation? They're talking about the ISAF and the 13 partners, which make a great contribution to this operation. So they're saying Georgia is one of the biggest contributors. So I found this. This is kind of interesting. The Ministry of Defense of Georgia. This is from Georgia's own website. Um, so here are representatives of the Ministry of Defense of Georgia, or American military servicemen, five U.S. Marines, and a sailor were honored for their contributions in support of the Georgia Deployment Program for ISAF mission. The medals were uh, oh, sorry, awarded to them by the commander of the battalion, Alexander Taguchi, who had been wounded while performing a peacekeeping mission with the ISAF operation. GDP, which is basically Georgian defense, uh, and ISAF is... The train and equip mission designed to prepare four Georgian infantry battalions in sequence for operations in Afghanistan. So another way you could look at it is what? It's uh, foreign troops that are training along uh, with United States troops that are going to take on the American people possibly, right? So, you know, you can go to stuff like this. Indiana Guard, this is Indiana United States Guard host Canadian forces as state military training facilities. So that's right, Indiana Hoosier uh, National Guard, which is not a militia, it's uh, what? They're training with uh, foreign 
country troops, foreign troops, Canadian. But this is a North American Union, so it makes sense. Then Oman, Oregon, or Oregon Guard, National Guard soldiers train with the Royal Army of Oman. So there you go. So this is, I can keep going on and on. You just go in there and look at them, and you'll see them. Missouri Guardsmen, Guardsmen kick off humanitarian. See, it's always in the humanitarian mission, isn't it? With opening ceremonies in the Honduras and Guatemala. What the hell are they doing down there in the Missouri Guardsmen, right? And even in this video, there will probably be a person in the comment board who will say, well, I'm in the mil I was in the military, blah, 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 blah. and, and uh, you know, U.S. troops will never fire on their own people. Well, like I've said before, and I've proved this with all these articles I'm showing now, it's not going to be United States troops most likely because they're going to be in the Pacific theater now storming the beaches in the Philippines. While what? Ooh, the National Guard is going to be, what, training and working with foreign NATO troops. And maybe even Russian and Chinese troops batting, beating you over the head and operating drones striking you in the backyard while you're barbecuing. So that's probably how it's going to go. Not your friendly, uh, white, uh, blue-eyed, blonde-haired American troop. No, he's going to be out of the country or in the Middle East by design. So you keep asking that question about it, you're not going to get fired on. Just go to the 29 Palms uh, a poll that was taken back in the day of Marines. Would they fire on American citizens? And the majority of them said yes. So I don't know how many... You know how much proof you need, but hey, you can sit in your in your in your in your front porch, a nice sunny afternoon. As Russians or Chinese or or um, Yugoslavian troops are coming to to do you know to, to check up on you as a humanitarian mission, a peacekeeping mission. Make sure you're safe. You can open them with welcome arms and give them lemonade. But if you check out a recent video by Joe uh, Smoke and Joe Fraser, uh, check out his channel. I can't verify this personally, but he was saying that according to one of his sources, that these Russian troops are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. It's not just some temporary exercise. All right, I'm going to keep moving and moving faster, so stick with me. China interested in Russian missile system. China wants to purchase Russia's uh, S-400 anti-aircraft missile system to replace 300 system and military technical uh, cooperation. Official told reporters on May 6th. Moving down, Russia wants to protect Europe from uh, the south, basically an attack. They're talking about an anti-missile shield to protect Europe. And uh, of course, that's Eastern Europe. NATO tensions over military sales to Russia, says U.S. study. NATO members are worried that an unprecedented billion dollar arms sale to Russia by France, Germany, and Italy could destabilize security. Then moving on, we have NATO plans to upgrade nuclear weapons, expensive and unnecessary proposals to modernize, again, modernize like special forces and robots and drones. Nuclear arsenal will heighten tensions with Russia, warns think tank backed by ex-ministers. Oh, our think tank buddies, our real uh, governors, right? U.S. successfully tests new Aegis missile interceptor, says the U.S. Navy. So the Navy has successfully tested a new ship-based missile, which uh, can play an important role in the European anti-missile shield, says the Pentagon, while Russian Navy to launch one uh, missile in 2012. They're going to do a test launch. In so this missile will be attached to a nuclear sub that will join the Russian fleet in October. Next up, defense leaders push U.S. to sign a sea treaty. Top defense leaders urge Wednesday for the U.S. to ratify a long-debated treaty governing ocean rights in order to bolster the nation's national security interests in the Asia-Pacific region and other key global waters. The United States is playing a 10-month warship deployment to Singapore. The first of a new class of U.S. warships will be sent to Singapore next spring. For a roughly 10-month deployment, the Navy said on Wednesday, spotlighting a move that may stir China's fears of U.S. involvement in the South China Sea. Well, it's not going to stir their fears. It's to just activate them. And I'm sure the recent deployment of U.S. Marines to Australia, on top of all most of the Marines leaving Japan to Australia, Guam, and Hawaii, is going to be on their minds as they're laying their little heads and their pillows after they've eating nice organic food and whatnot and non-fluoridated water. Navy moving ahead with effort to put lasers on ships. So uh, you can imagine they can attach these lasers to just about anything, including drones, but they're talking about directed energy weapons, guys, the future. And remember just recently, I was talking about how they are doing tests about taking down drones and what burning skin off people. So another mutual defense treaty, what will America do if China attacks the Filipino uh, islands? Well, China escalates Philippines dispute as U.S. continues to intervene and antagonize. Both countries are becoming increasingly nationalistic in part because of U.S. meddling. So, 
China suspends tourism to the Philippines over this dispute and UN global governance funded by climate change policies. Hmm. So support for climate change action is dropping, and it makes sense because the UN own official admits that they redistribute the world's wealth by climate policy. Thank you.